All right, so in this video here, we are going to be writing function rules. And now this is a skill that we have worked a little bit before, previous lessons and videos, but we are going to be including in some, some more vocabulary. Okay, so you and a friend are running on a track. It's 400 meters long or 400 meters all the way around per lap. Okay, your friend has already finished one lap at the time you start. You're both going to run at the same speed. You guys, you're going to be running together. So write an equation that gives your distance as a function of your friends. So on most of these here, when we have like several sentences and stuff, rephrasing it or boiling it down to the important parts helps us write our equations. Okay. So to, to rephrase here, we have your distance. Well, your distance is going to write, right? Because you have or will have run one less lap than your friends or 400 meters less than your friends. So you're just gonna take, to, to find your distance, you're just gonna take you how, however much your friend ran and subtract 400 from it, and that's gonna give you your distance if you're looking for meters. If you're looking for laps, you just subtract one, but we're working with meters here. So for writing the equation there, you just pick a variable for your distance, just call it D, and then equals, and then a variable for your friends, F, and then you're just gonna subtract 400 from it. And that's all there is to it for writing a lot of these function rules. They're not super duper tricky, as long as you can take whatever the story is and kind of boil it down to the important pieces, and then just give variables for the things that you don't know or you don't know yet. All right, so let's look at some vocabulary. So we have inputs versus outputs. So on the last example there, your distance was the output and your friend's distance was considered the input. So in this case here, the inputs, those are going to be the independent variables. And then the output is going to be the dependent variable. So your distance was the output. It depended on how far your friend ran. So the value of the dependent variable, so your distance, depends on or is a function of the value of the independent variable. So as is a function of the output is a function of the input. So there's a lot of connections with the with the vocabulary that we're doing today. So keeping those straight is going to be super handy. But I'll have a page on here that you can get in your notes that'll help you keep everything straight. So here we go. We're just going to identify the independent and dependent variables. So a painter must measure a room before deciding on how much paint to buy. So in this case here, the amount of paint that you're going to pot going to buy depends on how big the room is. So the bigger the room, more paint you buy. So the amount of paint depends on the measurement of the room or how big the room is. So your dependent variable is going to be the amount of paint normally measured in gallons. And then your independent variable, that's going to be how big the room is. So and that can be like square feet or square meters or however you're measuring it. Let's look here. Same, same question or uh, same instructions. So the height of a candle decreases for every hour it burns. So basically what we're measuring is the height of the candle and that's going to depend on how long ago you lit it. So, or number of hours it burns or minutes, or it could be, you know, whatever you're, however you're going to measure the, the time there. So dependent height of the candle. So in inches or centimeters and the independent is going to be time, how long it has been burning. All right. For this example here, a veterinarian must weigh an animal before determining the amount of medication. So in this case here, we have the uh, how much medication you're going to give the animal depends on how big the animal is. It's weighed in pounds or however you're going to measure those. Okay, so dependent, the amount of medication, independent, weight of the animal. So the amount of medication depends on or is a function of the weight of the animal. So now just looking at a lot of these different um vocabulary words that we're going to be using here. These are all connected. Uh, when I get through all of these, I highly recommend pause the video and put these in your notes. So your independent variable, that's always going to be the X values. Dependent variable is always going to be the Y values. Independent variable. So those X values are going to be part of the domain. Now we haven't gone over domain and range yet. So this is kind of a preview idea. So the Y values, those are the values in the range. X values are the values in the domain. So preview here, we haven't gone over those yet in this, um, yet in this video series. 
So uh, your inputs are always going to be X's, the independent variable, dependent variable, the Y values. Those are always going to be the outputs. Okay, uh, we got X values there and something new also is function notation. This is pronounced F of X and that's going to be part of your dependent variable, the Y values, the outputs, that's F of X. So that one's brand new. That's a preview uh, vocab right there. Um, if you're looking at a T-chart or a table, left column is always the independent variable and the right column is the dependent variable. And then on a graph, the horizontal axis, that's going to be your X values for the independent variable. And the vertical axis, that's going to be the Y values and the dependent variable. So go ahead and pause the video. Make sure you get these in your notes. It'll help you keep it uh, all straight in your brain. All right, so go ahead and pause the video again and uh, try this one out on your own. Then come on back, see how you did. So here we go. Frozen blueberries cost $3.99 a pound. So how much they cost depends on how many pounds you buy. So cost of the blueberries depends on number of pounds that you bought. So that's going to be your dependent variable is going to be cost. Independent is going to be pounds. So or cost is a function of pounds or weight. You could put weight on there as well. So real quick definition here. Um, algebraic expression that defines a function is called a function rule. So these are equations that we've done before. You could also think of it as a formula or a rule or, or an equation as well. So that, that's kind of what we're coming up when we talk about these function rules. So if we got our function machine here and we put in a 2 and we get a 10 out or we put in a 6 and we get a 30 out, well, what are we doing? Well, we're multiplying by 5. So if we put in an x, then we'll end up getting out a 5x because we're just multiplying by 5 by whatever we put as the input. So, so our function rule would be the y or the outputs equals 5 times the inputs or 5x. So that's basically what we're doing here is we're just writing a rule for the pattern or a formula or an equation. For now, it's an equation. Later on, we're going to change up the notation in, in future videos. So here we go. Follow along here. Um, identify the independent and dependent variables and then write a rule for the situation. So here we go. We have a moving company charges $130 for a week for a truck rental and then plus they're going to put in $1.50 per mile. So here we go. So the independent variable is going to be miles and then the dependent is going to be cost because how much it's going to cost you depends on how many miles you drove. Okay, so so we can so if we pick our variables, we do C for cost. You could do Y for cost if you wanted to as well, or D for dollars or something like that. So the cost is going to equal. Well, we're going to start out by having to pay 130 bucks out the gate, and then we're going to add to that uh, one dollar and fifty cents per m per mile. Okay, or D for distance if you want to do that, or X. Now, we generally don't write things this way. We normally write them this way, where we have the variable term first and then the constant term. But it translates exactly the same. So check it out here. We have the cost is, cost equals, C equals, uh, 150 per mile plus the $130 rental fee for the week. So we, we can still summarize this story here with either of these equations here. So go ahead and pause the video and give this one a try. Come on back, see how you did. So here we go. We're going to identify independent dependent variables and then write a rule. We have a fitness center that charges $100 just to start walking in the door, initiation fee. And then after that, they're going to charge $100 per month. So breaking this down, so the cost that uh, you're going to have to pay is going to depend on the number of months that you keep your membership going plus the $100 for the initiation fee. So here we go. So dependent, that's going to be cost. Cost depends on number of months. So months is going to be independent. Or you could say cost is a function of number of months. So here we go. Uh, writing the function rule or the equation or the formula. So C equals or cost equals. So we start out with $100 that you got to pay that right out the gate and then you're going to add to that forty dollars for every month that you remain a member so so you can write it out this way you can also think of it the other way uh, the cost is forty dollars per month plus the hundred dollar initiation fee so again this is a summary 
of this story here. And that's what your formula, your function rules, or your equations are. Go ahead and try this one out. Pause the video and then come on back. So here we have an amusement park that charges $6 for a parking fee plus $29.99 per person. So here we go. So the cost of bringing the, the whole family in, we, we got the big old van and we're going to the park. Um, so the cost is going to depend on the number of people in the family or, or in your group or whatever it might be, plus the $6 for parking. So the dependent cost depends on number of people. Or you could say cost is a function of number of people. So writing our function rule here, we're going to have C, cost equals, and that's going to be the $6 parking fee plus, right, and I'm just reading right along here. So it's $6 plus $29.99 per person, per person. So uh, on this one here, you could do P for people. Um, I just ended up putting an X on here. But again, this summarizes this story up here. The cost is $29 per person plus the $6 for parking. So remember when we're writing these, we do need to identify the dependent and the independent variable. The dependent, that's your outputs. The inputs go with independent because uh, the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. And then quick example here, again, we can say for this example here, uh, $100 initiation fee plus 40 per month, cost is 40 per month plus $100 initiation fee.